subtopic is how to start working with ReactJS and D3JS. Um, I'm software engineer, so I build web application using React, and I have a lot of tasks that like require having data visualization in our apps. So I use the 3GS and uh, for that, and I want to show you like uh, how I do this. Yeah. So let's start. So agenda for today is have a little intro, some common information, then we gonna discuss like why to use combination of the 3GS and React, and we gonna go to practical example so next time conclusion and q a section yep so to begin with i'd like to start with what what is data what is this word that we often use in our language so uh, data is past form of latin word uh, data so datum data uh, and it's been given so it's uh, when you see word datum and data is the same thing, but data is a plural and datum is a single one. But uh, it's not like a single entity. It's a more like, a, for example, uh, information about me is data, but my specific uh, attributes, so my age is a datum. So it's not about specific, uh, so datum, it's not about the user, but some user attribute yeah so information about the word by entities so it could be a person it could be object and uh, it's uh, almost always presented in our databases as the tables and uh, those uh, tables represent entities and uh, we will try to get attributes and to visualize, visualize them so um, data is information about the world and when we get it normalized we get information from the data and to get a knowledge we need to interpret the data uh, that information and only then we can make a decision so that's why we have data visualization because they allow us to understand what is going on with our data our information yeah so most of uh, data visualizations that uh, exist now, they were invented during industrial revolution. Uh, so before data was uh, typically displayed as a dry tables and to understand something, uh, you need to put uh, like labor in it. You need to go back and through through numbers and just like copying something and uh, then write down somewhere and you can like miscalculate something and has have to interpret the data so back then first data visualization appeared and uh, people saying that uh, pie chart is the first data visualization like as we know now yeah so data visualization is a graphical representation of statistics uh, turning numbers into pretty pictures instead of huge table of raw numbers yeah into visually appealing and easy interpret diagrams. But from our point of view, from UI side, uh, it's visual representation of a data set through widgets that allow user to not only understand, analyze, but also interact with it. So if you are currently making some UI, you probably already doing some kind of uh, letting uh, user know what's going on. So maybe you have some data set of uh, users, of an actions, or every, even emails, yeah? And you want to mark them uh, by their attribute, for example, status, and you're mm, showing users that this one is like filtered out by, the, by that status or uh, highlighted a different color, yeah? So you're already doing some kind of data visualization, but not in classical manner, but data visualization in UI. Yeah? So why uh, like history data visualization? So uh, the first uh, data visualization makers were map makers because it's very hard to like uh, pass information about distance and direction. And map was uh, the first thing that people came up, like simplify the data and make people to easier understand it more intuitive. 
So starting from that, like we have visual position and code, vision encoding position. So uh, as we know, like uh, also we can add uh, to the map some different colors, some different like for for different hive of a ground, yeah. So this is very important to understand what encoding will you get in your visualization. And our first example for today, we will be building pie chart, the first of uh, data visualizations, and it has encoding like area and color. So it allows us to understand uh, representation of our data, like how many of entities we have, and uh, by some particular field, we will understand what are they. Because, for example, if we are looking uh, on list uh, of friends in the, some social media app, we don't know like uh, they are specific, but then we can, through visualization it, we can just understand more what is background of our people. And as you know, a lot of people doing that not in a good way, but to have some advertisement or like political advertisement. Yeah. So understanding data is very important yeah? and analyzing it. So next uh, is why to use combination of the 3GS and ReactGS. So now we want to link views together for people, uh, for users to be able to get more insights, yeah? So uh, for linking those views, React is very good uh, because it uh, manages upstate. And also it has creating updating DOM. So it helps us uh, to, through Visual DOM to optimize, yeah? Optimize our interaction with the DOM. And we can also use component composition that is very powerful tool because we can divide our UI into smaller bits, into reusable bits, yeah. So why we will need the 3GS? Because it's a large li library. It's the most popular library for charting, and it has a tremendous amount of uh, different function for mathematical computation. And it also have a functionality for creating, updating the DOM. And it uh, generates more complex uh, components just like by interacting uh, interacting with real dom so we will see also example of that yeah. okay so to start um, live coding section uh, session i want to like bits that we will go through so first when we integrate our widget into our app we want this chart to be responsive we don't want like to be at static and we will uh, look how to make this. Uh, then second part is uh, defining a contract. So what is contract? It's a uh, props that widget will take and uh, like the form of props that for widgets that uh, it will build data visualization with, yeah. And third one, but not the least, is mapping con uh, marking convention. So this is important part, and uh, this is like part where people um, struggles because it's getting like complex and bored, and you cannot manage it. So I will show you how to deal with it. Yeah, and we today we will use different scale functions and we'll add interaction from one chart to another. Yeah. So yeah, let's move to recording. Maybe some questions for now. If not, I will just jump into. Can you see my screen? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, data visualization, start editing, and magic will happen. Okay. So I want to put something in my React app. Uh, and as we know, in GS6, we already support SVGs. So at first, I want just to put a SVG there. And uh, the thing with SVG is that it should have some width. 
it required yeah, and some height. Yep, and I want just to put like rear first example will be pie chart, so it is basically a circle, but it will have different sectors. Yeah, so at first we we're gonna put some circle. So to draw circle circle in SVG, we need to have this center coordinate C X C Y. We're gonna have radius and we're gonna have some fill. So I want to start with uh, zero. Zero radius will be 100 and a fill will be purple. So what we see from here that if we have our SVG, it will start from center position, yeah. And this zero point is top uh, top uh, point of like when we go in from top to bottom and from left to right. This is our zero and SVG. So this is very similar uh, similar if we draw some something at school so uh, pixels it will be like squares on our page and we need to understand like how to manipulate it more, most beautifully so the first one i want to like uh, move it to the center yeah so i'm just dividing with and height yep like that I guess it should be more. Uh, there is a misspelling in height. Yes, in word height. Like that. Yeah. Thing. So yeah, now we have our circle, but it's uh, not on the center, so it doesn't like responds to what I have. Like it's uh, in the middle, but because there is a style here, yeah. So text line center. But it doesn't change like, so if I will have a bigger view or a smaller view, it will not change its size. So it's become ugly, you yeah? And what, the first thing that I want to add is uh, basically some size of our component. Yeah. So in here, I want to create a directory and I will name it common. And here I will put uh, all of components that I will reuse in multiple places. So here I have like final result and I will copy and will explain what is going on. Yeah. So in common, I will create size where component. Okay. And we'll paste this section. So what it does, it basically it can get some uh, width and height from props. But what it does, it's read a parent component. Yeah. It will wrap all our data visualizations in uh, to this div that has width and height one hundred percent of a parent and then it will uh, just on resize it will provide a uh, height and width to our svg so this could be changed uh, we can have a like a different resize component like this is like when people want to make resizable components they implement this in different ways but this is just example on how to use it so and now I'm gonna go here and create a folder by chart. And 
and it will have index file. So here I'm gonna create um, chart box. Yeah. So our index file will be called chart box. Uh, why it's called chart box? Because uh, currently it's uh, not the logic of our chart. It's uh, mostly like our widget for all charts uh, that we gonna have. So it uh, will return some fragment and it gonna have this uh, title. We're going to have H2 and we're going to put title here. And the second one, it would be the size of our component. And it uses pattern from React uh, compound component. So here we're gonna have our chart here. Yeah. So if I'm going here, I will just so I'm taking title from props. And now uh, how it works uh, that uh, I probably need to use a render function. Yeah. Another button from React. So this will be a function that will take the width and height and will return this markup. So now we will have width and height from size aware component. And the radius will be also dynamic. Yep, so now I want to export it and to use it. We're gonna go to our app and we're gonna import our pie chart. But, yeah. So I'm going to have and title. So I prepared mock data and it is our employees. And uh, first I want to like show um, gender. Yeah. So we're going to call uh, employees gender. So we have an employee gender, but we are not, not seeing this, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, so go different way. I will create here our pie chart component.
it will take width and height. And we'll return markup from this because I think there is some. And we're exporting it. This is our um, and now I'm going to use it inside index. Yep, I have it. So what I need to do here is basically adding some view. And I will pass it class name. What I should call it layout container. And I will close it. I will go to styles. Layout container will have border, for example. Yep, solid black. Okay, let me check an example. Nope. Hmm. So there is some error in pie chart. Yeah, we should divide it by two. And also, I don't want it to be like a full width, full height. I want in the size of our component, there is such a thing as a denominator. So I want, for example, a denominator to be like one and six, yeah. So I pass this prop inside index. So size of our component will know that I want to have this smaller yep it's not going well huh? yep like that so now you can see that I really have responsive design and depending on my screen widths, I can build charts that will fit in in any layout container. And this is first step. So next one uh, will be just implementing pie chart and from our presentation, uh, defining contract. So let's look in our data. So I prepared mock data about the employees. It's just a list of employees with their ID, their name, their age, uh, so gender, years in company, and there was some reviews like satisfaction level. Yeah. So what I want to present in the pie chart, I want to understand the relationship between different uh, gender types. Sorry, work from home. So 
Mm, now what we need to do here in this chat box, uh, not only we are allowing uh, to have a title or to have a responsive chart, uh, the next step is to define a contract. So to have this contract, I need to pass some data to my chart and I'm going to go to app. I'm going to import this uh, employees data from uh, my mock data. And I'm gonna pass to my part chart this data. And it will equal employees. Also, I want to explicitly uh, show my part chart, pie chart component uh, that I want it be by gender. So I know that I have my all uh, employees have properties gender. So I will name it. Uh, field name and my field name will be gender yep. wrong brackets So now when I will go here, I will be able not to just take my width and height to present something, but I will get the data. So here in concept box, we can we see that somehow data is undefined. Maybe there was a file somewhere. So I getting my employees in my app and I'm passing it as a data. Yep, that was my thing. Oh, okay. Wrong file, sorry guys. So I have data and my data is object with employees. They all have gender. And here I have this uh, field name. and it's called gender. So what I want to do, I want to go through all of uh, employees and uh, then define to how many uh, counts of each like gender type. Yeah, so gender is a uh, categorical. So it could be male, female, or like some not defined like so there was a, so some sort of view with employees and they were not willing to put gender or they not identify themselves with any. Yeah. So to do that, I want to use uh, the tree functionality. So this is the first time I will import the tree. 
Yes, but I will not import this to like draw something uh, or put something into uh, into GSX. I want uh, the tree to have make work for me like this counting. Yeah. So D3 GS it doesn't know it. So I need to add a dependency. D3 GS. So uh, the tree has a lot of functionality to generate for our switch, but uh, mostly it has a lot of functionality with working with uh, data, with aggregating data. So I want to have uh, to use some function for from the tree that is called called rollup. And I will pass data to it. And uh, how the tree works, uh, it works like, like higher or other functions. So like map, it's taking like uh, some function to work with. So first one is always an array of data. And the second and third one is uh, a function that will process those data. So I want to uh, tell a roll up function, it's my spelled. I want to tell roll up function that I want to have a length. So I will get a count of uh, uh, from every group, yeah. So I will have length and I will have D function. So D is our specific data, not datum. And I will get datum by our field name. And field name was gender. So by getting this, I will get uh, groups in a count. Yeah, because I group them by some by uh, each field that we have like the gender field. So by field. And what this function will give me, it will give me map. So yeah, I will console. And you can see that we are getting map and it's uh, counted all uh, uh, gender in all uh, employees. So it's counted that it has uh, six males, uh, three females and uh, uh, two persons didn't put anything in their review. So it's just undefined. So they don't want to be identified as male or female. So, but for my data, I don't want to use map. I actually want to go back to array. And to, to do that, I uh, first want to have a groups, like uh, revert this map into a hash, into an object. So I will call it group. Oops. And I will use uh, object. From entities. And I will pass my uh, groups count. So my groups gonna look like that. OK, 
question what is wrong with that? Okay. Uh, you misspelled that from entities. Ah, yeah. Entries, yeah. Yeah, finally. So I have male, undefined, and female. And what I'm going to do next, I'm going to take keys from this. So bad day for spelling. And I will get uh, object keys. from me oops so by getting this keys it will be just uh, male undefined and female and uh, also hmm, i want to not have under uh, uh, undefined i want to rename it uh, to others so now uh, to get the uh, pie chart data, I will just um, map through the keys. Yeah. I will get key. And what do I want? I want to just return an object. And this object uh, will not uh, have uh, like all of the data. Uh, for example, uh, people are like, when trying to explain part chart examples, they are just passing the array of numbers and to interpret it like to have percentage and different sectors. But what I really like is to have uh, object instead of just like uh, array of numbers. So first I will have value and this value will, will correspond to groups by key. Yeah, so I get group keys, for example, male, and I will take number of males in my employees array. And I also want to have label. So having label and values in different, like it's very common for like uh, selection or drop downs, and it's more powerful than just to have some array of numbers. Yeah. So what I'm doing now, I'm figuring out what contract will be with my pie chart widget. So my pie chart widget wants to have an array of objects. Each of them will have value and will have label. So if I have uh, if I have a key and uh, key is not equal undefined because uh, it, this is not like undefined like uh, it will be casted to a string yeah and i want pass or key or i want want just to pass uh, property other It's working so, and I'm gonna pass this data to my pie chart. So if I would like to make work manually and just to put it, I would need to have some functionality to calculate uh, what sectors are. And I don't want to do that because I have the three GS and uh, I'm lazy. Yeah. So now when we are get, we are finally having our contract. Yeah. 
with our pie chart components, so by array and value and label in each uh, entry. I want to go to pie chart. Yeah. And I want to consume the data. So uh, there is uh, in the 3GS, I need to import that. I'm bad with typing. In the 3GS, I'm gonna really. Why are doing this? <laughs> wow, it's going wild. I want to use the tree not to just uh, have calculation by but to have calculation uh, that will produce for me uh, this uh, sectors, yeah, the slices of the pie. So to do that, I will not deflecting. Sorry, there is some problems with the thing. Does then go here. Not allowing me to do anything. Hmm. Yeah, finally. I will just try to lower the side. So yep, going back to button. So I want to use uh, from the tree uh, functions that will uh, generate me a pi, generate me uh, degrees of each sector. Yeah, not counting it myself, but get it from the tree. So I will define a function uh, pi generator. And to create this, I will use constructor from the tree called by. It's going wild. I don't know what's going on currently. I cannot put anything here. Yeah. So I want to use uh, constructor from pi. I want to call it. And the trick with uh, T3 is that it will always use those functions that I mentioned, like higher order functions will use functions like that. So I need to, in value, I need to put a function that will define this value. So uh, my data, uh, currently is having label and value and I want to I want to define the value for slices by giving value yeah so this is my count for each so generator So having this function by generator, I am able to have a pi. So 
if I'll console log just by generator, it will console log me a function. But if I want to create a pie, I will call this pie generator and I will pass my data to it. Let's look what we got from Pi Generator by our data. So now we have object, we have start angle zero, we have end angle. Yeah. So for each of our group, so we have group males, females, yeah. And our data is still here, it's it present like data property. So we have value, we have label, label is correct as we can see, and we have third one, yeah? So we have three groups and count for them. And this is uh, start angle and angle. It will help me to build this pie chart. So instead of having just a circle, I want to have, uh, hmm. I want to iterate through this uh, pi. So it, I don't know why it's, ah, okay. I want to iterate through definition of pi and for each of it. So there is a pi and there is a slice of pi. Yeah. I will gonna go and I will return slice. So yeah. I need to go here and define define this slice. So it will be function and it will uh, take a uh, value. It will take radius as our circle was before and also it will get fill the same as our circle did yeah? and what it will return uh, we will get uh, value value will be slice radius will be width divided by three yeah as we have had it before and fill will be still purple so we To generate slice, there is also a generator from D3 and it called arc. So const arc. So arc generator, it will be D3 arc, the same as D3 pi. And we will call it 
and we also want to put a uh, inner radius and we will put radius there and uh, no not in inner will be zero because we can create it on that it will be outer not inner so we have our arc generator function and to generate an arc um we will need to return uh, so in dom elements we have for example d or fragment in react to uh, gather elements and uh, in svg there is such element group it's just it's called like g and it just grouping elements so I want to put pass class name slides. And to has this pass, I pass has uh, attribute D. And to this D attribute, I will put our arc generator. And I will just pass value of our slice. Yeah, it has something here. Yeah, but I see that I uh, don't want to get where X and Y is. So I will have some group here also to make it centric. Yeah? And to move something in SVG, we have property transform. And what transform I want to have this will be like string and i want transform it fits with translate and it has two parameters like first one it will be by width and i want divided by two and second one will be by height. Yeah, something is wrong, I guess. Hmm. What could be wrong? So I'm putting this pass lie here and why it's not generating me a proper thing. Let's look into here. So there is spy solution. We're getting G, we're getting fill, we get an arc, we're not getting anything else. So this is probably some mistype. So let's add fill here. Yeah, I need to put this one in a radius, outer radius. So always the radius should be present. Yep. Now we can see that we have really segments, but we cannot distinguish them uh, between each other. So we need to define some fields so they will be not uh, all purple. 
So for doing that here on the top of my component, or maybe even here, I want to define color scale, yeah? So const Uh, scale functions maybe we'll go go, go back uh, so we will use scale ordinal for this so scale functions they uh, help us to map data values to values that, that will be better represented and ordinal it's basically having a scale for each uh, group so if uh, for example i have colors so here somewhere in common, I should have colors and I didn't put it here. So I will put here in common new file called colors. And this colors GS file will just have two different palettes. And in pie chart, I want to import scale uh, scale ordinal, but not from the tree. Uh, it called the uh, tree scale. Yeah. So to generate scale by this colors i just need to call this constructor and i need to have this range and i want to pass colors that i have Yep, and to consume this color scale, I want to have an index here and fill instead of being purple, it will be this color scale function by index. What's wrong? Or the no. Yep, makes sense. So yeah, I had uh, like blue, orange and green colors in my color scheme. And now each slice is represented like it. But I also want to show the number because people are not very good. Like we see that this is more than a half, but what exact value is this and this in percentage, we really don't know. And to do this, I want to go back to my contract, yeah, to formatting, and I want to add functionality that will bring me percentage in the data object. So percentage will be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I need specific value, so this one, and I want to divide it by total count. As and to make it percentage, I will need it to multiply by 100. Yep. So I don't have a total count anywhere. So I need to get this total count. So how to get total count? <laughs> I want to do some mathematical stuff. So I will again use the tree and the tree has a function called sum. And I will put group keys 
as traceable object here, uh, yeah, a traceable array here, and mm, I will get a key and I will return this value. Yeah. So it will get me a sum of each group. Yeah. So now we are looking into RFI and it has data and it has percentage. Yeah, because we divide it, but it's not very beautiful. So we'll probably need to rub this and just make something like to fix it and pass one. Yep. The latest one I have, yeah, I have nice percentage. Hmm. Now I want to use this percentage as a label in my pie chart. So we have group here, we can put something else here. So to put text and I want to put it like, hey, yeah, I have one. I have three in the same place. Yeah? So to make it centric, I need to use again D3GS because I uh, generated the uh, arc by using uh, arc generator. So also there is such a thing. as uh, arc generator and it called centroid so it will bring me center position of my arc and my values that i'm getting so now i want to transform yeah because we moving things around in this video using transform and I'm going to use translate. So transform translate. And from this label position, I will, it will be an array of things. It will be X and Y from this label position. And I want to put them here, yeah. So it will be X and it will be Y. Yeah, now we have three hays around here. And instead of hay, I want to put um, percentage and percentage it will have like in here so i have my value and i have value data and percentage yep. but i want it also be interpolated Yay. So next thing I want to do, it's like exact centroid and I have some width of my label. So I want um, move them a little bit to the left, to the left. Yay. Now I have it all done. And I want to have some styling. Let me find a by chart. I want to have a stroke for it to define my slices and I want to change bar chat label. But I need to add this class. 
to the text. Yep. So next thing that I want to add, uh, but it's, uh, I guess, not very important. Uh, we don't have much time, yeah. So we'll, we'll just copy paste from here. So I have this legend component. It's nothing special. It just uh, getting this function color scale and defining the color. So I will just copy that maybe while we oh, I'm doing that anyone has some questions. Guys. It's pretty clear, as I think. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to add a div here to be able to add a legend. So we can put an SVG into the div, but we cannot put a div into SVG. You should know that like this is like worth mentioning. So we will have another div. Uh, maybe I will just go here. The ready solution. Yeah. So I'm putting div with these classes and I'm putting legend and I'm importing legend. Like that. Yeah, it doesn't have styling right now, so I will grab some styles from here. I will grab basically all of them. Yeah, and now we will have our legend. So uh, the thing what I want to show you is that we are basically having this like overlapping. Yeah, but it should not be uh, solved by our widget. Uh, we have this resize component and it just reading the layout container. And uh, then we can, for example, go here and where we have layout container, we will just have mean width for it yeah so now when we go smaller yeah it's not enough we will have 15 five yeah so now it stays like it's not controlled by widget it should be cre uh, controlled by your layout yeah so what i want to do now I want to show you how from this chart we can go to a chart with scale. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, not with scale, but with axis. So the next example, I will get this data and we'll make a bar chart with it. Yeah. So to do that, I will create a folder called bar chart. And as I understand, like bar chart will have uh, the same contract as uh, this one. So in bar chart index, I will have the same logic as in pie chart index. So I can just copy it.
so this is this would not be repetition because maybe I want to show something else, an extended logic. So yeah, and it will have title and in the app I want to have the same thing as pie chart, but I want to have a bar chart. So I will have a bar chart. I will import it. Bar chart in yep. So what's next? Uh, I have defined contract. So it will be chart box, chart box. It will have, have defining contract, the same thing. So it will have a group. It will have percentage. So the same layout container, the same size of ice container, but I want to make it more wider so i divide it in bigger number so but instead of pie chart i will have a bar chart here and uh, the reason like i'm gonna work with uh accesses and for doing that, uh, I will need to support margin convention. So that's why I want to import component. From react. And instead of just using function, I will have a class. So it will have render. And for now, it will just return an SVG. Yeah. So in render, I will have const width and height. That I'm taking from this props. And as I'm using it, I want to be employee gender, employee gender. Yep. I will call it employee. I won't want to switch some places. So this one be on the top and this one will be on the bottom. So I'm going to bar chart index and from here I'm gonna change all occurrences. I don't see it can change on the occurrences to bar chart. So what it's saying me, element time built-in component, I forgot it to export it. Yeah. yeah, so we have to charge. This one is empty for now. This wasn't here. So 
how to start to think about access. So I want just to go to my SVG and I want to paint two lines. Uh, so to draw a line in the SVG, I need to have four coordinates. So X1, uh, Y1, X2, Y2. And I need to have a stroke. And it will be red. And it will be stroke width. Like three pixels. So it will be very, very visible. So I want to have two lines. And so the first one will be X axis. So it goes from start of uh, the left to the right so it will be zero and uh, zeros for y axis yeah because it's an axis and it go to the full width of my svg yeah i need to close it so now we can see that uh, currently SVGs, they are counting from the top. Like we are not gonna deal with that right now. But if I, for example, draw a second line, it's not very visible. Yeah. I want to draw a second line. So it'd be zeros for X coordinate and it will be from zero to height. So yeah, and it should be also more thinner. So now we can see that this is how coordinates work. And if we going to like go and look to our example, we have labels here. We have like uh, title goes from the app, yeah, from box. Then we have like some uh, ticks and some labels for those ticks to show us where our where we are, like where this scale function like bring us. So we need to implement margin conventions for getting this. And to do that, I want to have a constructor. I will take props. Super. Uh, yeah. I don't want to have any state, but I want this instance for me. Yeah, it's again typing and I don't have much time. So Irina, I'm so sorry, we have just 10 minutes before the end. Oh, just 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay, then. Uh, so what I want to have, I want to have calculations here. So I want to have this inner width and inner height. I want to have the scale functions here. And before I even do anything, I want to set calculated values. And what this function does, so during component in, uh, initialization, yeah, when construction works, I want to copy this calculation function. It's look massive, but it's really making life easier. Yeah. So what I'm doing here, maybe I will just grab this one.
and I need a common utils. So what I'm doing here in my bar chart, I'm creating this function set calculated values and I have this margins. So to be able to define mar margin convention, we want to have this margins width, height, margin, top, margin, bottom, margin, left, uh, Y label width and X label height. To define those uh, buddings that will help us to have aligned and have access in our component, yeah. So, and here I want just to show you that this pretty simple function, but as we organize code in this way, we are just going to have all of this uh, dim dimensions and we will uh, define inner width and inner height to be able to work with it. So now if I'm going back, mm, and it doesn't have bar view. Mm -hmm. At least one example will be finished. It's not this, cancel the file. Yeah, it's easier for me not like just to to go through here. So as we are here on the ready solution uh, in the bar chart, what I want to do, I want to have the set uh, calculated values and to me to have inner dimensions and this inner dimensions will allow me to put this label here. When doing that, I'm able to change uh, everything like from the props or by just uh, changing it in one place. Yeah. So I'm able to change to change alignment. And I will put these examples in the repository somewhere or just share this code sandbox. Uh, what I wanted to show here is uh, that uh, currently, if we are using this uh, class, not a component, we are able to have these things on instance and they will be easy reachable anywhere. And it's very easy to extend functionality when you have a class component and you have instance. And if you have this calculation function that will run uh, during uh, component initialization and during component update, yeah. So again, set calculated versus enforce, you will be able to have a resizable charts, and you will keep margins as you like, yeah. So what else I wanted to talk about? If, uh, for example, I get uh, this scale function, I'm just defining it here. And for bar chart, I'm def defining like the scale functions, the scale band and scale linear. For the scatter chart, I'm able to just copy paste this code and make changes. So it will be scale linear, but with steps. Yeah, because if I'm not doing that, I will have this, like, let me show you. So just initial scale X and initial scale Y. And if I'm turning that my uh, bubbles will be cut. Yeah? So that's why like we need steps here. And for the timeline chart, it has exactly the same logic, but it uh, has calculated scale 
from time and from linear it has a uh, step from linear but from time we have this just nice and it does the same thing as stepping so this section is uh, calculating scale it's very similar so each time we set calculated values we will figure out our inner dimensions so inner dimensions is just this one this view where chart is and uh, we will define our scale yeah, from these inner dimensions. And uh, to define the scale, like each chart will have a specific logic. So there are four charts, three of them have axis. They have exactly the same margin logic, exactly the same inner, inner dimensions calculation, but they have different scale. What difference they also have, it's uh, this view. So for line view, I'm working uh, with line viewer, line and circle. So as I'm using composition, I have a separate component to do with line. And for example, for points view, I'm just showing circles and I have this on change prop that is drilled down to me from the upper component. And by doing that, I have this unchange and I handle setting active items. So why is it important? Because React is bringing us uh, ability to link multiple views. And now when I'm clicking here, so this is employee satisfaction level. Uh, I'll also will show you employees um, logic that I have for coloring. So for color, I get get color from satisfaction. And if it goes up like uh, last value and previous before that, like uh, if it go up, it became green. If it go gray, it, um, if it uh, stays the same, it's gray or there was no previous value. And also if it's red, this is going down. So this is two dimension plus third dimension is color coding. And by adding interaction to this chart, we are able to not only see like this James worked for 20 years and this is totally fine, but also we want to see that actually by having the data by specific user in its review, we can see that actually something went wrong pretty bad. And for this one, we see that it was bad, bad, and then it's a little better and then up it's and very important to know that to like to that you could link different uh, charts and have a user to be able to dig into data more they're not just showing one data visualization but multiple ones and they are basically all the same they having the same convention, they having simple uh, the three GS fun uh, scale functions and interaction you can easily add by React GS. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's finalize today. My examples that I will bring you they using scale ordinal for uh, coloring scale, scale band for creating uh, bar chart. So it's dividing all plays that we have by a number of groups that we have and all the, uh, also adding padding to it. Scale linear is the same as uh, we do like uh, by manually writing on the paper. We have the same step and this is like scale linear. So we can see that this step two, two, and we are adding two, yeah. So this is linear scale and scale time is the function in the tree that will just uh, convert our in mock data. We see that I have dates and it will convert us into human readable form and we displayed it to us. Yep. So next step is conclusion, like uh, just try to build your own chart. It's not so easy. And also look into register solution. Uh, register solutions, uh, they are multiple of them, but all of them, they need to have a contract. They need to define what data to consume to draw data visualization. Also here I'm mentioning people that I look uh, up to. So this is Mike Bostock, he was like, 
great contributor to D3GS. Uh, Curran Keller, uh, he is a great teacher. He explains the things that I tried to explain to you today, but uh, he has like 18 hour video on YouTube. Like you can look like almost all examples that I go through, but not so much react, but more talking and explaining how the three GS work. And with Stellar, it mostly for users that already work with the tree and want to know some different tips and tricks and want to look into some ready solutions. So he has his own YouTube channel also, and he's on Twitter. You can look into his work, like how, how he's doing it. So um, also what I was mentioning is, for example, this is the example of charts uh, that I have. And uh, what differ is from uh, ready solutions that, for example, I have like uh, min and max showing for line. I have different types of lines and I have uh, highlights on the background. It's easy to add it with SVG. So it's uh, basically a rectangle on the background, but it's hard. Like if you don't have it in ready solution, you have no ability to customize it and extend it. Yeah, because SVG doesn't know about that index. So it just cares about order in JSX to like paint it. So for here, I had my solution and I bent it on the background and I have a mouse move through. So to define every element on the page, on the SVG and uh, merge all of tooltips in the one tooltip. I didn't saw such a thing in any, any ready solution. So try to build your component, try to look into ready solution because you already know that as they are uh, working with contracts, if you understand contract, you just pass the data and you don't have uh, to deal with uh, different uh, margins and this margin convention. Yeah. So yeah, this is what I wanted to say. And I guess we already run out of time. Yeah, but uh, maybe someone have questions. Okay, great. If there are no any questions, Irina, thank you so much. It was really awesome. As Valentina, all right. Uh, thank you so much for this uh, very interesting demo. Uh, thank you so much. It was cool. Yeah, I will try better next time. Yeah. yeah, and dear participants, please don't forget to fill in our feedback form because your feedback is important for me. Feel free to write any bad or good comments and I will try to solve your problems. Uh, or any other issues. Thank you so much. Thank you for attention. And uh, uh, we will be waiting for you in our next events. Bye bye. Have a good day. Bye, guys. Have a good day. Bye. 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 Bye